There's no secret to agriculture. Just be consistent and show up every day. Got a nice uh, cacao there. The other one's not looking so nice. It was doing pretty good. It was a little smaller, but now it's looking kind of withery as I step on the empalaya. So we're in the middle of turnover. This is old at Sal and Sealy, so it's already kind of rotted. So we're gonna move that out. We got our wing bean over there, and this is now, uh, what is this? This is pepino. So we have all our pepino transplanted. We only, only did a little bit. We're kind of keeping the pepino and the empalaya, all the vining stuff, uh, sayote, all in the same area. We started our migration over there. They're doing a okra harvest and probably weeding. It's super itchy. And then we're starting to plant into the field succession wise. There's not too much that's gonna end up growing together, but it just gets us a good long-term growth. So let's go walk around and take a look at the checks that we got. So wind hasn't been too bad, but I do like that they staked down the, the pepino. Looks pretty good uh, for that. So that's just gonna be personal consumption, maybe a little extra surplus market selling. Nothing crazy. Doing a lot of maintenance right now on the farm. I had to buy another sack of fertilizer. Luckily, the prices have kind of stabilized. So it's been, it's been a little bit better, but it's still expensive just for the amount, especially for the stuff that we're going to do here. They're going to get a lot of sun. So we're going to swap out. So here's some of the heat that's going to happen. So they did put a little bit of nitro bore and fertilizer, but you can see casualty, casualty. This is probably just due to the heat because we were having a bunch of rain and then not rain and then rain and not rain so it's just going to be one of those parts where you're just going to lose x amount of transplants so this is all going to be hot pepper so let's go walk up here no crazy washouts even though we've had a ton uh, going around so it looks like yeah they're cleaning up the okra and what's really nice to see is that our sealy's flowering reflowering hey and so it just seems like it's getting bigger and bigger. Hey, what's going on? So okra, super itchy, fun time to harvest, but our sealy just keeps getting bigger and bigger out in the field. So I don't really see any need to continue with greenhouse. One, if we can just do it in the field and you can kind of see the height that it's setting right up there, let's go walk over. But so these normal, Sun scald, sun scald. So you guys have normal parts. So what I have the guys do is they just write down at the beginning of the season how many they planted. So that's 159, 158, 154, 154, 150. So I know that in this section there's that. So as I check it a month later, then I know how many live, died, I need to replace because I should have extra transplants over there so let's go check on vanilla all right i like breaking up those videos it makes it a lot easier for me to edit so let's see how vanilla has adapted to its new home nothing crazy nothing's normally going to eat these guys i'm going to do some osmocote which is like a 14 14 14 uh, slow release, so it's good for all part. This was your stereotypical sun scald Right into there in the bottom. This is vanilla sun scald where it's probably getting cooked a little bit You can see a little bit there. So this spot was probably sunny uh, Compared to the others, but we can at least see the canopy denseness. This is our durian tree. I don't see a lot of new flowers on it So there was a lot last time now. There's not a lot Let's go take a look at this one. All right, so this one started. We'll push that up with Osmocote and do a spray. Hello, Duggos. Let's take a look. So a little bit of flowering. Let's see how you're doing. You don't look, you got a little sun, didn't you? Where is your... See, I'm like checking here. Where is it? Did it fall off or die? No, we got new growth right there. You can see that, Ooh, of course, you can see that growth point. So there is new growth. You can see that, but always checking because these, I try to root them before I bring them up here. And 
and then I let them adjust under the shade because they're gonna go into that greenhouse behind us. So I'm just kind of seeing how they adapt. So something here likes eating vanilla and probably has a bad tummy because you normally don't want to eat vanilla. It's pretty uh, annoying. This one did pretty good with its shade. The crazy ones there. So wander around. So one of the big things uh, that you end up doing is you end up just checking a lot. So this vanilla has found its spot and it has now made itself a home. So it's now starting to climb up that tree. So that one was probably a great example of vanilla accepting its environment. Uh, let's see the other ones. The other ones, not so much, not too bad. And these guys, you know, they want semi shade. They want bright, but now they're kind of picky sometimes in what they do, but we're looking for vanilla to accept its new home. This one's got a little ant. So that's one thing we want to avoid. You want to avoid ants and any part that could uh, pass on disease and the viruses. So you just want to make sure you limit that. So you end up treating for the ants, not so much whether it's your crop's going to have any viruses on it, but you're treating for that. So, okay. No, no epic failures. So that's good. So I had the guys uh, cut uh, kawaiian uh, bamboo across and then anchor it in here because we're going to lower down our guide wires into here because this is going to be the height of our vanilla this just gives us a three tier because the top one will be our shade net that will apply probably about a 40 to 70 percent shade and it just depends you can take a 70 percent and stretch it really good and then it becomes like a 40 percent so we're going to do that as well so i had them remove the plastic mulch so it has our leftover dufos and uh calcium magnesium into the soil and then we're going to add uh, a mulch inside there i probably could take the other ones but i know i'm going to have them start cutting and treating uh bamboo in between because we're going to do three rows this one's going to have about 60 vanilla plants inside of it so not too bad Let's go mosey on over to greenhouse one. We had caterpillar attack. Let's go take a look at that. So treen, grandmother, papa, they're doing okra harvest and probably getting super itchy and taking a look at the Sealy. I'm gonna go take a look at our crazy caterpillars and see what's going on in here. Cause we had a crazy caterpillar attack, which is weird because been really, uh, hadn't noticed anything. Noticed some curling in our Sealy, but nothing that would lead me to believe that there was a, uh, a ton of issues. I still see some of that bright lime green, but yeah, I'm really more impressed with uh, outside ceiling. This one just looks pretty because it gets tall, but you produce a bunch of leaves and not a lot of fruit. So the outside field is still growing and actually not even peaked yet in its height. So the outside field is kicking this one's butt in terms of production. But this has been a good experiment, at least to kind of do Sealy inside of here. We did treat. So like here you have ants. Let's see, zoom in that. Ready and go. No, it doesn't want to. It doesn't want to. So there's, there's ants on that one. So what I did ask them to do is cut this back. So you want to cut back. Starts invading. It starts chasing the sun. You want to chop it and then redirect that growth. Because we're not growing leaves. We're growing peppers. So uh, I'll have to remind them to cut it back and just pull off all the greens and then the hidden reds because you're getting this type of thing where they get super big and elongated. So we're always checking into that. So this one's been good. They make bigger peppers for sure. Um, a little bit where they come in. So that one's a nice big one right in there. Let's see if I can get that one. This is probably a super heat. Oh yeah, I've got some other ones over there. See, I don't like this one, it doesn't snap off. Nice and neat. So we had caterpillar, it looks like, caterpillar attack, so I really want them to um, spray and treat for caterpillar. Uh, you can do a, a number of things to treat for that. You can do uh, crop oil, and you can do some other pesticide type attacks. So here we still have some, you can see kind of the remnants where they would get in there and dried out and then bite into it. I think this one is a good example. So first we thought it was 
rats, there you go. So first we thought it was rats, it's not. It was actually caterpillars, so I really want them to prune this place up. And then we'll just go from there. So a little bit of nutrient here, when it's lime green like that, it means it's lacking probably magnesium or another nutrient. So I'm seeing it more common now. And again, I'm being cheap on our feedings because this is just a test to see how uh, this pepper variety grows inside of the actual protected cover because we did it on the outside cover and they grow about the same. So you have simple little bag right there and it seems to work pretty good. So now I'm just greedily grabbing some of the reds. But if I um, have them prune it and then get more sun on it, these guys are gonna turn a lot faster. There's another pepper. I love this part. I just get to hunt out the peppers. That was good. I like when they like pop off like that. So one of the other big things that you're gonna have to harp on is cleanliness. So when they do come through, your greenhouses must be clear because if you leave all that trash, what you would consider trash, correct, right? Trash, but it ends up becoming a food source for rats, for anything else, because even though these are hot peppers, they're not crazy hot peppers, and it's still a, you know, vegetable, fruit type pepper. So it's a fruiting plant. One of the big things is that don't leave stuff behind for rats or any other pests to make homes in, because then it'll come back and bite you in the butt as it bites your peppers. So you just wanna make sure that that's happening. So let's give you a good, good example. This is how uh, vicious these plants can get. This is already probably about 10 to 12 feet tall. It's already touched our shade net where we use in other parts of the year. Um, so it's already grown up that high. So that's already way too high. That's well outside. So I'll be uh, nagging on that later. So, you know, this is what it is, normal maintenance. We're gonna enjoy some uh, lunch and then go through that, point out some of my uh, changes. If you like what you're watching, you know, don't be afraid to subscribe. That really helps me out. And if you like the video, make sure you click that like button and then comment down below if you want any specific things, whether it's vanilla or peppers. Again, I'm working on small batch peppers and I got another project of fermentation I'd like to share with what I do with these peppers when the market doesn't want to buy them. So I hope you enjoyed watching. Check you all in the next video. Later.